Hi, my name is Tamara and this is my knitting podcast where I talk about my knitting. I'm from Ukraine and I'm 20 years old. I study in film school here and today I wanted to talk about my new finished champagne cardigan. Um, I wanted to talk about my experience knitting it, uh, a lot of modifications that I've made and first and in my opinion one of the most important things that i need to mention it is not perfect it is not perfect at all um i have already blocked the cardigan itself but i haven't blocked uh, the bottom band i am wearing sweatpants and it is a bit a bit a little bit wonky here it is uh i have a little bit of rubbing out at the back but more or less it looks okay in my opinion i'm so sorry i have some hair here on my face um so let's start off. okay uh, this is not what i was going to start with but uh, the buttons is pieces of wood like imagine that you have some old wood and it has a Oh my god, I forget this easy word, but it has this thing that I will translate and it was just cut into buttons and just um, covered in um, in the thing you need to cover wood with and the, they are so beautiful. I paid for them, like for, for buttons I paid, like I would pay for um, a one skin of yarn, but it was all worth it, I'm in love with them. So, my first modification was gauge and yarn. Um, I get hot a lot, almost always. And uh, this is my problem, like I have it all the time. I can be cold, uh, the weather can, can be negative outside, it can be snowing for a lot of days in a row and all of this stuff. And still I will wear something that is just too thick or has a more hair in it and too tight gauge and I will get hot, unbearably hot and I don't like this and one of the perks about knitting that uh, you can adapt things to your liking and this is what I've done so Petit Knit in this uh, pattern, this is Champagne Cardigan by Petit Knit uh, she used Double Sunday by Sunny's Garden this is a DQ wet merino yarn, merino wool yarn, and she added um, a mohair, lace weight yarn, silk mohair, I don't remember which one she used in the pattern, but I knew, and she, it is needed on 4mm needles, I do not remember the precise gauge, um, but, well, it is tight for my liking, like you have this decay, and you have this mari um my hair, sorry, and you need it on four millimeter ne or on four and a half millimeter needles. I'm so sorry, um, and it was a little bit tight for me. And also, I have a sweater that I needed with fingering weight merino, and a strand of mohair on five and a half millimeter needles. And this gauge, it was very loose. It would allow uh, allow my skin to breathe while wearing it. It wasn't too hot for me. Anything that uses uh, such combination of yarn that was used for this pattern would be completely too hot for me. This is first point. And the second one is it would be way out of my budget at the moment. I could not possibly afford some good decay weight yarn and a mohair. Uh, sweater amount of mock hair to, to knit this cardigan. So, uh, the yarn that I've used is uh, sold in a con. This is a Laura Piano Savage. Savage, do not know. Uh, this is 70% uh, merino and 30% cashmere. It was really cheap, really cheap. I paid for this con and I have more than 100, almost 200 of grams of this yarn left over um, because I've cropped my version um, but I still would have had a lot of leftovers I paid for this the amount I would pay for some good uh, merino TK yarn even less so uh, this is 250 meters per 100 grams this yarn is uh, almost unspun um, pretty sure I'm recording on my phone, I'm pretty sure you can see it. It is one ply. 
and you can pull it apart with almost no effort. Uh, the thing that gives maybe it is not one well it is it should be one ply and it looks like it is unspun. I'm not an expert, but uh, the thing with this yarn is it is covered in some kind of oil for it to be easier uh, knitted on knitting machines on big productions. So you need to wash this watch. M more likely you would need to wash it one, not one, but two or three or even four times to get the right, um, not even gauge, but the right look uh, for cashmere to bloom in this yarn. So I was, I was completely uh, satisfied with this. It would give me more uh, loose gauge. Um, I can't show it. It is not a see-through fabric, but it's, it is loose. Uh, much looser than I would have gotten on four and a half millimeter needles with the recommended yarn. Uh, then uh, I've used four millimeter needles because, uh, well, I, this yarn would be too gapy on four and a half millimeter needles for my liking. For someone else, it may have been okay. Uh, so I have needed something between size XL and L to get uh, size M me. This is easy, almost, uh, and I've used 4mm needles. Whew. And then I have heard a lot of people complaining about the bottom band and well, this is a hell of a beast. Um, I've heard people spending like months knitting it. I've spent uh, around a week, but I have lost almost all of my knitting module recently uh, because I had oops a lot of uh, unfortunate situation happening for me to me in a row but uh, I've needed this one um, not precisely but I think somewhere in a week and well it wasn't hard at all I didn't use the pins I used just a long three millimeter circle needle to pick up all stitches and then using the same needle I was knitting uh, it knitting it back and forth um, the thing that I was worried about is the placement of buttonholes and buttons I would I was really extremely afraid to mess up the place when I would uh, sew my buttons it went it went all right. Um, then I've spent two months knitting the whole garment. I spent so much time on it uh, only because I was knitting a lot of garments uh, simultaneously. So uh, I'm pretty sure you can knit it like uh, in a month or so, especially if you would knit it on a four and a half millimeter needles like you supposed to without playing with the gauge. Whew. So, I really recommend uh, blocking the whole garment before you would uh, need the bottom end. Not because, like, the opinion that I've heard uh, that uh, the edges would stop rolling after you block it, my edges would still roll. Uh, maybe because I do not have uh, blocking mats and like pins to hold it in place. I've just washed it, laid it in a position and the size that I want it to be and uh, leave, left it to dry. But uh, like the garment grows, so <laughs> you don't... Uh, the thing that I was most afraid of is that I would need the bottom bed too tightly and uh, like I'm going to sh try to show you and my cardigan would be like not the length it's supposed to be but it would be like this in front because of the tight button band. I may have overcompensated and needed the button band a little bit too loosely uh, where my buttons lay. Here it is all right. Why it happened? Because while I was knitting I would add some stitches uh, to my pick up, picked up edge. I can't even try to explain how we did it. Uh, I did it all into... I followed my intuition and it was not the best decision, but again, uh, I'm quite alright if it looks a little bit wonky, it was homemade, uh, handmade by me, so the, my biggest fear would 
that it would be too tight and it is not, so it is fine. Also, uh, the length of the body would be completely too long for my liking if I've made it uh, following the pattern, but it, it completely depends on whether you'd like to wear it with skirts, with high-waisted jeans, with some another type of pants. Now I'm wearing sweatpants just because I have a lot of tax tasks today and I'm recording, recording, I'm so sorry, this video spontaneously, so... Um, all the other time in my life when I go outside if I'm not walking my dog I wear some high-waisted jeans or high-waisted skirts or, or dresses so this length is uh, perfect for me I can wear it with both I'm pretty sure that's it I had uh, this problem I was really afraid of rowing out while knitting flat and well, I tried different methods to prevent it. I do not like purling uh, the classic way. I need continental. And uh, like this way when you just purl. We know, we all most likely know this way of purling, like just the classic one. Um, I can purl this way. I've uh, learned to purl uh, wrapping the yarn the other way while I'm purling, so I twist my stitches and then I need to when I go to the knit row I need to like be aware where the slack that I need to knit with lace. Uh, it is really hard for me to try to explain it. I can explain it even if in my first or second language. In English it's just impossible but I've heard Andrea Mauri talking about it on her I need if I want to podcast um, that this way may help you with rowing out and that this way uses a little bit less yarn. But now I'm purling in uh, Portuguese way. Uh, if I'm wrong and if it's called some other way, I will correct myself with text somewhere here. But I'm pretty sure. So this is the way I purl. But it causes some rowing out. So when I uh, need ribbing, it's fine. When I need back and forth, it's not. I've tried my normal way, Portuguese Berlin. I've tried um, this way that Andrea Maori talked about, that I've learned when I first started knitting, started knitting. And I've tried this classical way that I can stand well. More, most of my rows I just thought that I don't care, I want to be happy while I knitted and knitted my normal way. Whether any of them helped, helped me with rowing out? Nope. I still had it. Blocking helped me a lot, but it happened because of the type of my yarn. So it was covered in some oil, it is it bloomed like like I haven't seen any yarn bloom this much in my whole life. So I still had rowing out. And my conclusion to this pattern, this is one of my favorite garments that I've ever knitted in my life. I'm in love with the sleeve lengths, I'm in love with the body lengths, and I'm in love with the way I've knitted it, with the yarn I used, even with the buttons I used. But am I going to ever knit this one again? No. If something happens to this one, to this mic, to this orange cardigan, red cardigan. Um, I'm going to to need this again. I do want to have champagne cardigan in my closet, but while I have champagne cardigan alive, whole, and like in normal state, lying in my closet, I'm not going to need it again. This was a hell for me. I do not like knitting stuck in a stitch back and forth. If and when I'm going to need uh, another cardigan, just to have some options, I'm going to choose something with a texture pattern. Whether it would be ribbing, uh, like cables, some texture, some like uh, eyelets, anything, like a lace. I don't wear lace, but let it be lace, anything. Like something, a fisherman's rib, brioche, just not stuck in it or I'm going to stick it. So this were my opinion on my uh, champagne cardigan. 
I would recommend it. If you like the looks of it, I would recommend knitting it. But again, I wouldn't knit it the second time just to have two different champagne cardigans in my closet. I, I'm not ready for it. So just a quick video uh, fully about this one project.